That is Mark Saunders. He was on with Greg Brady this morning. And when he was chief of police, he said that his force did a tremendous job clearing out uh, encampments at Lambden Stadium and Trinity Spadina Park. The city of Albansman didn't really agree with the response, saying it was over the top. Uh, but what is the solution? So Saunders now saying he will not allow them into parks. Josh Matlow is going to enshrine these things. These will become a permanent thing under Josh Matlow, and he will not remove them. Olivia Chow ignores the question. I haven't really gotten straight answers. Um, the local councillor of the area, Chris Moisey, says that they have tried to work with the occupants. They've tried to offer shelters. They've got outreach services there, and most of them are not taking it. And right now we've got 30 parks in Toronto with these tent cities and my next guest, who is wanting to be your mayor, has made clear, and he made clear weeks ago, he will not let them take root. His name is Anthony Fury. He is mayoral candidate. He is in studio. Very nice to see you uh, in human life. Uh, great to be back, Alex. All right. So this is a hot issue. Certainly, uh, Brian Lilly of The Sun kind of pointing out what everyone sees, that we've got these massive encampments growing. They're going to get bigger as the warm weather stays with us. Um, and residents have no voice. And, and so your stance on this, you heard Mark Sanders coming out saying he's against them. Where are you? What is your a clear official message on these things? Yeah, I, I'm glad Mr. Saunders has adopted my policy uh, that I announced a couple weeks ago saying, look, we are not going to be allowing these encampments to take root. We're not going to allow needles to be in the parks and the playgrounds, uh, the injection site workers. We're going to collaborate with them so that they need to show up every day at the park to clean up this stuff before families go and use them. You know, I'm going to phase out the injection sites, replace them with treatment centers. But in the interim, they have to play a role in cleaning these parks because it's the spillover coming from all of that. And I've said, look, we need to reclaim the parks. They have to be for the whole community. They have to be for everyone. They have to be for families. Alex, you know, I lived around the corner from Moss Park for a number of years before we moved to the East End. And I've lived that experience of taking the kids in the stroller to the park and saying, because of the situation in the park, because of people there causing chaos, because I look for needles and I find needles and I say, sorry, kids, we can't stay. We got to go. And there are a lot of families throughout Toronto experiencing this right now, and we can't allow it to happen. And it's not just a downtown problem anymore. It's mm -hmm. spilling over into Etobicoke, North York, Scarborough. And I have been learning that public health is not just attempting to create more injection sites, and they are, but, but hidden sleeper injection sites where shelters, which are just supposed to be for, for people to stay, not for profits, are being told they have to start being injection sites as well. All these quasi-sites that's spilling over, that creates more encampments, it creates more uh, drug dealers going to those neighborhoods because, you know, drug dealers are pretty smart, they know where their customers are. We have to say no to this, and as mayor of Toronto, I will make sure there are no more tent encampments, full stop. All right, they're not new. I mean, they've been around for decades, right. um, but they've gotten really uh, yeah. significantly bigger. The question is always, well, where, the, where do they go? Because we have a federal government that didn't give the city of Toronto any money, um, for allowing them to come in from Roxham Road. Right. Toronto is a declared sanctuary city. So we've got less shelter space, no place to go. Where do you put them? Because you can't just, kick, you kick them out of the park. Where are they supposed to go? Oh, okay, but, but respectively, my starting position is that they're not in the parks full stop. We're bringing them back for families. Now, to your question, though, we didn't, you know, these are adult human beings who are making choices about where to go. We didn't put them in the parks and we can't say uh, to to these adults, you know, this is where we are going to put you. I mean, they're not like inert objects. We've got to work with them. And Councillor Moyes made a great point saying we've tried these services. And, and Alex, we know when we talk about supportive housing, there are so many examples of people in the drug crisis mm -hmm. who get put into one of these facilities and they basically just rip the appliances off the wall and sell them and then they don't stay in the facility. So the bottom line is I have been clear. My first announcement running for mayor we're going to phase out these injection sites. The drug crisis is fueling so much of this. The how random, long? Like, the, what's what's the reprieve? Like, because people are going to say, "Well, you can't cut people off of drugs." You know how, um, you know, uh, volatile, volatile this conversation is. So, what's the window? Are you looking at uh, cutting people off in a couple of months, or does the safe injection stay for a couple of years as you build treatment facilities? Because again, these are not overnight fixes. Yeah, the day I come in, things are going to start changing asap on this. New York City Mayor Eric Adams is doing stuff on it. BC, they got a lot of chaos in Vancouver, but they're they're trying things different. Portugal, very different, puts mm -hmm. people into mandatory treatment. If they're found with possession, they don't treat them like criminals. They're mm -hmm. not putting them in jail, but they put them to treatment. But where would you get the treatment? Because we don't have those facilities. 
we are going to take the allocated resources that are being put into these injection sites and flip them into treatment. It's not that difficult. It's really retooling the way we think about things. Because right now, when you go into the injection sites, when you go into hospital with an overdose, they're not pushing treatment the way they could. If you are a cigarette smoker and you go into hospital, oh boy. They really push it on you. You got to get off smoking and they're pushing. And you know what? That that worked. And many millions of people have gotten off of cigarettes in recent decades. Good on them. I, it, it's, it's not easy, but they did it. And we don't have that, that, that mindset when it comes to getting people off of drugs. The system is enabling way more than it is healing. And we got to start being more of a compassionate society. And through helping these people, Alex, we help ourselves. We help our families. We reclaim our communities. Well, we're, we're, well, a lot of failure over the years, as we're starting to see, is all kind of coming home to roost. Things that should have happened years ago, whether it's affordable housing or, you know, facilities, all this stuff Absolutely. never got done. So now it's here and it's a problem. You know about the ruling coming out of Waterloo by this judge that said, look, if you don't have shelter spaces for people to go, then, you know, they've got constitutional rights if you can't provide it to go into these parks, what would you do? Because Toronto very well could face this kind of, um, could find this kind of charter challenge. My priority is to look out for Toronto families and Toronto neighborhoods. And that's what I'm going to be singularly focused on. Not what a judge in Waterloo was saying. I will say though, you are right that the shelter system in Toronto, 40% of it is actually at occupancy uh, with recent refugees. Mr. Trudeau only just decided to deal with the Roxham Road situation. And and uh, refugee accommodations is a federal expense. So I do not believe that the job of Toronto Mayor is just to shake down Mr. Ford and shake down Mr. Trudeau for more money. But I do think Mr. Trudeau has to acknowledge that the problem in our shelter systems sure. uh, is actually a federal government problem. It's not a municipal problem. So, you know, I look forward to uh, chatting with him on on, you know, day one. Uh, when I become mayor. Does Toronto stay a, st- a sanctuary city? No. Okay. I'm not sure you're clear enough. <laughs> that was a fast answer. <laughs> I'm not used to fast you, answers. You Sorry. Know, you know uh, that I, I love this city. I've, as a media person, as a journalist, I've been traveling all around town, meeting people all walks of life. I've been doing it for 10 years. I'm doing it more than ever now, meeting so many amazing people everywhere. And I got to tell you, and as the father of three small kids, Toronto is worth fighting for. We can fix this, but we can't let this city move one step further to being like Seattle, San Francisco, downtown Vancouver, all the awful Facebook images, Instagram pictures we're seeing going on there. Everyone says to me, we can't let this city go further in this direction. And that is what I am committed to doing as mayor of Toronto, as someone deeply passionate about this city and making sure there's a future. Everyone's talking about leaving Toronto. We got to put an end to that. We, we, we got to grow the economy. We got to have more businesses come here, jobs come here. We cannot share the wealth if we're not growing the wealth. Quickly, I've only, I literally have about a minute 30 for you. Um, you're polling now and you've been polling consistency, consistently at the 9% uh, range. And now you're, I guess, according to Forum, you're tied now with Brad Bradford and Mitzi Hunter. But you've been polling. I'm well ahead of Brad. I'm double Brad. There you go. Anna Bailao, they said I'm tied you've, with Anna today. You have been, yeah, you've been cut um, from debates. Are you going to be getting into any of these debates? There's a Toronto Star debate. There are some big debates coming forward. But based on polling and the way they are picking, you, you are going to be on the stage, correct? Uh, I, I'm in the televised debates in June. I'm looking forward to, to doing that. Uh, there is a Toronto Star one coming up in a couple of days, and I, I don't believe I've received an invitation to it yet. So I'm, I'm more than happy uh, to join them. But if, uh, if, if they're picking based on, on the, the rankings and the polling, then you should be there, no? I, I would say so, yeah. I don't, you got to ask them. I don't know. The invite hasn't come in. I think it's coming up this week. Uh, I'll, happy to join them. You, you know me. I'm happy to Apparently debate it's not, anyone. It's not hurting you, I'm, so maybe you do skip them. I don't know. Yeah, the yeah, I, mean, look, 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 if, if, yeah I mean, the polls are going up for me, and we got momentum, so I don't know what it is. If the invitation was lost in the mail, if people are afraid of me, or I, I don't know what the issue is, but I'm I'm happy to show up at debates. You know, I'm a happy warrior. I love everyone. So passionate about this city. So happy to be in the debates, or or happy to just keep going and 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 winning support out on the street. But I'm I'm in all the televised ones in June. That's for sure. All right. Well, nice to see you in person. We'll have you back again because I know how uh, busy it is and uh, hard to get the message through. So thank you for joining. My website is fury.ca, F-U-R-E-Y.ca. Thanks for the opportunity, Alex. There you go. They always get the information out. And that is Anthony Fury. So you have now heard Mark Saunders' position on this. You've now heard Anthony Fury's clear stance on this, even though I think it came out a couple of weeks ago. And as for the rest, you know where they stand. Josh Matlow, Olivia Chow, they'll They will continue this. They will continue down this line. And frankly, I can't even imagine what the city of Toronto looks like in two to three years if this is the approach.